parents, welcome back to the Share Parenting Podcast, where every mom deserves to feel sure of her parenting. I'm your host, Sammy Bell, creator of Share Parenting and author of Share Parenting, Building Blocks to Create Their Best Childhood. Here on the podcast, we address the issues that make moms question themselves or their kids, and we discuss creative solutions that meet the needs of each unique mother and child. Let's dive in. This week, I want to focus on the you in Share Parenting, and that you stands for unique. Each one of us has a unique way of viewing the world, a unique history, unique personality, and the same is true for our kids. So when I work with a family, I help them to understand their unique brain and their children's unique brain. In Sure Parenting, Building Blocks to Create Their Best Childhood, in the chapter on self-honor, there is the Ways We Mom framework. And in that framework, I break down various areas where you will find commonality in your family, and you'll also find huge differences among the members of your family. And those differences and even similarities can be sources of conflict. So I kind of talk about what to do if you find out that you and your kids have a big difference or a a big similarity in those six different areas of your life. In addition to that, one of the ways that I identify children is with four different brain types. So those are the enterprising child, the exact child, the engaging child, and the easygoing child. Now, personality typing is not new. There are dozens and dozens of different methods out there, and some of them have worked really well for the kind of work that I do. Um, Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies in particular has been absolutely amazing for working with couples who are trying to get on the same page in their parenting. And... As I have looked through different styles and different types, I have noticed over and over again certain characteristics that come across my plate. Most parents that come to me either have an enterprising child or an exact child. And the enterprising child is outgoing, very strong-willed, very determined, very focused, They can get so focused on what they're doing, in fact, that they literally can't hear you. So they don't listen when you call them to do something or you're trying to interrupt their focus. They are one-track-minded. When they decide something they want, they get it done. And that can, of course, be a great thing, but if what they're wanting to do is something you don't want them to do, that can be a very infuriating thing. These kids also are very physical, so they learn everything by doing. And you can tell them that something is dangerous and you can tell them that they're going to fall and they're still going to do it anyway because they are not going to process that information until they, of course, do it and do fall and do get hurt. And then they might do it three or four more times just to make sure. (laughs) So these kids do come across my plate the most Um, these kids also tend to have more speech delays, I've noticed. Um, this is at this point just a correlation, but it's an interesting one that I've noticed. They also tend to have a lower impulse control when it comes to things like hitting, uh, their friends and siblings, um, in frustration, but also in play. Um, These are the kind of kids that when they want their daddy to play with them, they're going to just like jump on his neck. Um, They're going to walk up and stomp on your foot and weird, crazy things. You're like, what did you do that for? Well, they're kind of like little puppies. They want to play and they're nipping at your toes trying to get you to play. Um, They seem to have a lower pain threshold or I guess a higher pain threshold. Like they don't seem to notice as often. Now, this, (laughs) I have to be careful here because There is a point of sensory processing disorder where they don't notice they get hurt or like there's a level at which this is no longer normal. So 
if you're concerned, always bring it up with your pediatrician. But for these kids, they are the ones that tend to get hurt and kind of get over it really quickly. Um, I shouldn't say they don't notice, it's just that it doesn't seem to deter them much, is really what I mean. Um, <laughs> and these kids are awesome. They are the ones that are going to grow up and change the world because they are so fiercely independent and strong and fiery and all of these characteristics that we love and we hope our children can have once they're grown. <laughs> when they're still little, it can be challenging. So that is the enterprising child. Now, the, the next most common child that I see is an exact child. And an exact child is a very black and white thinker. They see everything as this is how it should be. And when things don't go along with how they think things should be, they react and they tend to react very strongly. These children are also very determined and very strong, but they're introverted. Um, they're quiet. They are still uh, as much as a child can be because of course all children do move, <laughs> but their, their nature is just more still. They're observant. They analyze and they criticize and they critique and they're very hard on other people, but they're also very hard on themselves. So this is the kind of kid you'll hear say something like, oh, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I get that right the first time? Or, you know, something like that. Um, and again, there is a level at which needing things to be a certain way is no longer normal. If you're concerned, talk to your pediatrician. Um, however, there is a level at which it's completely normal because that's just how their personality is. And for these kids, they, they want to understand things. They interact with the world in a very logical an information-based way. So for these kids, you want to sit down and explain things in as much detail as you can. You want to answer all their questions. They're going to ask lots of them and they want the meat. They want to thoroughly understand what is going on with the subject or an expectation that you have or anything like that. The challenge can come when they don't understand something if they don't understand the why behind it, it's very hard for them to hold on to that expectation. Once they understand it, it's actually pretty simple for them to uphold the expectations that you have for them. Um, but when it doesn't make sense to them, that can be really challenging for them. And because of this, this child, I find this type of child gets easier the older they get because they get more logical. So if you have a foundation where you explain things and help them to understand and make sense of the expectations that are falling on them in whatever way that you do that, if you're helping them to do that consistently from a very young age, as they get older, it becomes easier and easier to have those conversations and to notice when there's a gap and help them fill it quickly and to give them the tools to fill it for themselves teaching them how to research things, teaching them how to look stuff up at the library, stuff like that. But before they're logical, <laughs> before say four-ish, maybe even five, depending on your kiddo, uh, it can be really tough because they're, they want the information and they want the logic and they want it to make sense, but they're still two <laughs> and things don't make sense when you're two. Um, the world is very complex and confusing and it's a, it's a difficult, process for these kids. They want to control so many things, basically anything they don't understand, and they can't. And that causes a lot of friction and frustration for these types of kiddos. So um, my oldest is this type of kiddo. I absolutely adore this type of kiddo. Um, and I find it's kind of fun to work with them because they really do things based off of logic, even if it's flawed logic. If you can understand what they're doing and why, you can help them to shift their behavior just by understanding their why. Um, as with all kids, you want to empathize with, with what's going on under the surface, but with these kids, I find it particularly interesting 
and I often learn things from them. Even very young, very, very young, exact-minded children, I find I learn from them because they just cling to facts and information like crazy. Um, my middle child is an enterprising child mixed with one that I will get into in just a second. So the third most common um, brain type that I work with is the engaging child. And this child is an interesting one because to most of the world, they're kind of the ideal child. Um, they are very social, very outgoing, very bubbly, the social butterfly, um, all of those things because they want to engage. The way they engage with the world is socially. So they want to talk to everybody. They want people to pay attention to them. They want to be the center of attention. They want to put on a show. They want to have, you know, the adults in their life really notice them. And so for this kid, if they're not being noticed or if they're being misunderstood or misconstrued, they can be incredibly frustrated. Um, and at the same time, they really like to make people happy. So they will chameleon and they can put on a show, like I said just a second ago, for quite a while um, until they just can't hold it up anymore and they kind of collapse. And that's when you see their meltdowns because all kids melt down for different reasons. But for this kiddo, it tends to be something like that. They're just exhausted. They've been putting on their particular version of show for too long they're exhausted, they're tired, they, they're done. Um, they will want to talk all the time. <laughs> they will want to make noise all the time. They will want there to be noise all the time. They bounce from thing to thing to thing to thing. Um, they're not typically children that will sit and work on one thing for a very long period of time. And like, I, like with everything, kids do that, you know, but for this kid, it's even more so. They have tons of ideas. They love, they, they say things like, oh, we should do this. Oh, I have an idea. Let's do this. Um, even if their follow through isn't the greatest, they do have a lot of ideas. So the trouble often comes when this engaging child has an introverted parent because the high, high energy level of this kind of child does not match with mom and or dad's much lower energy level. And that's just challenging. It's challenging when you have something that's so polar opposite in a relationship that has to function together. Um, some things that help these kids are play dates, doing outings where the kiddo can exert themselves but the parent can kind of hang back maybe putting them in soccer where they're running and running and running and you know you're reading a book on the sidelines <laughs> something like that can totally work for this kind of kiddo they tend to do very well in social settings like preschool things like that um they tend to be too talkative for traditional public school and that tends to be what gets them into trouble a lot at school um, particularly if they are either gifted or, um, struggling because if it's too hard for them, they really just would rather talk with their friends. And if they are, if it's too easy for them, if they're bored, they'd rather just talk with their friends. <laughs> so, um, those are some of the things that come up with this kiddo. And I'll do lots more individualized podcasts and videos on each type and the different things that come up with them. But for this kiddo, um, providing the ways that they can engage appropriately is really helpful. So maybe putting them into a drama class or something like that where they get to fulfill all of those personality needs. Um, that can be supportive of who they really are. And the last one is called the easygoing child. And this isn't to say that this child never melts down or anything, because they all do. This isn't to say that this child 
has no conflicts because they all do. But as a general rule of thumb, they really like to just go with the flow. They are more introverted, they're quiet, um, they can be, particularly if they're uncomfortable. If they're in a new situation, they're perfectly content to just quietly observe um, and wait in, until they find their in, make some sort of connection. And then once they feel comfortable, once they feel safe, they form deep lasting bonds. So they connect with the world emotionally, which can be kind of risky. You know, the world is a rough place sometimes for these kinds of kids. And they have very tender, loving hearts, and I adore them. Um, and I think that they are often misunderstood. They're labeled as just shy, and people kind of want to fix them in this way. And they aren't necessarily shy. It isn't necessarily anxiety. It's just that their nature is very calm and gentle and flowing and they want the world to be in harmony. And that can be a challenge. They want their family to be in harmony. So if it's easier to just go along with whatever's going on, then a sibling with a stronger, force, more forceful personality, like an enterprising sibling or an exact sibling, will probably win most of the time um, on little things like what show to watch or which game to play or stuff like that. They're more likely to go along to get along. Now, the cool thing about this child is there's sort of a built-in defense mechanism because <laughs> If they get pushed past a certain level, they will absolutely let you know it. Um, like I said, these kids are not beyond the meltdowns. All kids have meltdowns. They are, however, more patient for longer, if that makes sense. Um, they notice all the little details. They like to do kind of small, intricate work. Um, they like to study things up close. Um, one of the things that I loved to do growing up was cross stitch. Like that's an example of the kind of thing that this kind of child might get into. Um, and I think that oftentimes this child can sort of be overlooked for a period of time because they are easygoing. Uh, and it's important to honor their emotional connection need. They need to be able to sit and talk with just you without all the distractions of the rest of the world, without a million other things be pulling you in every direction. Um, they, they need to be provided with the space to share their deep thoughts and ideas. Uh, with these kids, as they get older, a journal can be a great tool where they can take their time and really express what they're thinking and then you can write back to them and and you guys can communicate on that level even though life gets chaotic and crazy and overwhelming. Um, because they have that slower pace, these kiddos have a tendency to essentially make you slow down. If you are pushing too hard, if you are the rushed, crazed, let's go, let's go, let's go, relate, relate, relate pointing at myself here, um, they will freeze a lot of times. They'll just stop. And you're like, what are you doing? Put your shoes on. I told you to put your shoes on. Why aren't your shoes on? That energy does not vibe for them. And they kind of freeze up. And I think part of the reason they do that is to really make you slow down. Bring the chaos energy down a notch. They feel it all and they really empathize and they want you to feel peaceful and harmonious and so the best thing they can do for that goal is to just stop and you have to make yourself pause recognize what's going on take a deep breath meet them at that level and then you guys can move forward together um, it feels in the moment like it's taking too long it's taking too much time 
but as soon as they feel comfortable again, they go right along with you. So it is worth taking that little bit of time to stop, slow down, calm your, your anxious or nervous energy and connect so that they can move forward. So I mentioned my middle child is a cross between the enterprising and the easygoing. And at home, he's often the enterprising type. Um, but it's interesting to see how these play off each other because he's, n he's not particularly outgoing at all. In social situations, he's much more the easygoing child. He will sit and hang by me, watch everybody. Sometimes he really makes a connection and he'll play for hours. Other times, he's perfectly content to just stay with mom. Not a big deal. Um, when he first started preschool at two, he requested to go because his big brother went and he did not speak at all. <laughs> they weren't sure he had a voice. He has a very soft uh, voice for a little guy and that is characteristic of the easygoing child. They just have a soft, everything about them is just kind of soft and flowing. And at the same time, because my middle has this secondary enterprising side of him, he has that fire and he has that determination and he has that insane focus where he literally can't hear anything because he's so focused on what he's doing. It's very, very interesting to watch him develop. Um, my oldest, he's the exact child to a T. Couldn't even tell you if he had a secondary. He's so, so much the exact child. Uh, my third remains to be seen. I am not honestly sure yet. I have kind of wavered all over with her. Um, she does seem to be fairly outgoing. She likes people so far, She's, but we don't go out that often. So maybe that's just my perception. Um, it will be interesting. I will update everybody once I have figured her out. But it's a learning curve. With with kids, as they change and they develop, things come out more and more. Um, there is some belief that you are who you are from the moment you're born and it never changes um, as far as these personality types and stuff like that. But I think that life changes you. and of all the research that has been done, the nature versus nurture debate has gone on and on and on, and it really has shown that both play a factor. So do I think that kids are born with an innate nature? Absolutely. Do I think that certain circumstances could change their expression? Absolutely. Do I think that at different times they might be expressing themselves in different ways. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like life to me. So while you might take some satisfaction in knowing their exact brain type, if you aren't sure, try some of the tools out. See what resonates with your child. See what works for them. And that might help you to narrow it down. You also might have a pretty nearly 50-50 split like I do. Uh, that's okay. If you recognize that, you know, your kid has all of the traits at different times, that's totally normal. We all really do have all of the traits given any personality typing system, but one of them should stand out maybe closer to a 50-50 split between two. And if that is the case, then you will be able to understand your child better and better and work with them at their level with tools that match their unique brain type so that you can help them to develop and grow and honor who that they are as they do so. So I hope you enjoyed this overview and I look forward to creating more content on these four different brain types so that you can understand your little ones and have a happier, more connected home. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.